Hello, my friends. I want to share with you something today that I can guarantee is going to happen. A prophecy that cannot fail. Um, if you look around at the state of the world that we're in, and specifically at the state of the house of God, you understand why I give you a prophecy today that is incapable of failing. Because God is the same now as he was forever. And he will be the same now as he is tomorrow. God is never changing. He is the one constant, which is truth in this world. So how God has dealt with his house before is how God is also going to deal with his house now and how he's going to deal with that house tomorrow. Um, just kind of looking on my phone here, you can see something. During its long history, Jerusalem has been destroyed twice, besieged 23 times, attacked 52 times, and captured and recaptured 44 times. Notice that this house, whenever we're talking about Old Testament here, was the house of God. The very same Pharisees who put Jesus on the cross 2,000 years ago, at one point in time, they were considered the house of God. They were who held the keys to the Messiah, which would eventually be born. It came through their blood. Um, so you have to understand that anybody who is claiming fellowship with Christ, they are claiming to be part of that house of God today, whether they believe or not in that house. And we know that whenever Jerusalem, which was promised to essentially stand forever if the will of the Lord was followed by his people. Uh, but of course we know that wasn't the case and every time that Israel became divided, you can see by the evidence of history what happened to them. They fell because obviously as Jesus spoke himself, a house divided cannot stand. So a prophecy that I can guarantee is going to happen is that the state that we live in in this world with the body of Christ, that is anybody who claims to be of that house, we are divided and are going to fall. And it's going to come because it's allowed by God. So we can, we can essentially all agree on that. I mean, you can go to you know, just search up anything you want to on YouTube and you can find it. Go to the church down the street and the church down the street from that and the church in the next town. You'll find it. Everywhere is somebody speaking a different doctrine apart from each other. There is no unity within the house. And the house can't even agree anymore that Jesus was crucified, let alone anything else that requires more depth to think about. Um, and I explained that in previous videos about what the doctrine of dispensationalism, just as one example, uh, actually says about your belief in Jesus Christ. You deny him by that belief. Um, so that's just one example. And you have, of course, all the multitudes of other doctrines and churches out there that deny him just in a different way. It's just not specifically what I have been led to focus on because I see what has come into YouTube over these past eight, nine years. I've watched it grow. I've been specifically led to see that piece of the house of God. And even in that piece, I see that not one agrees with another. How they all divide everything or they don't stand for anything, which is the same as being divided. If you don't stand for anything, you also fall. So you run into those two categories, and, and you can look all over and see that everywhere where people claim that they are Christian, they cannot agree on anything. So we know that we're living in the time where the house is going to fall down. And if you look historically all throughout Israel, I've explained this before, every time there is a large group of people, and there are multitudes of larger groups of people, even though they don't you know, agree with each other, they form packs of wolves and agree with those of their pack. And all of them essentially say the same thing. God is with us. God is going to rescue us. We're under the grace of God. The rapture is coming to save us. No harm will come our way. They're all saying the same thing, essentially guaranteeing their safety in the hands of God 
even though the doctrine that they preach denies him. So how, how, do you, how do you relate that to what has happened? That's exactly what Israel did, and that's why you see the statistics here on, on my phone, just a simple Google search, of the war and the conquering and the dividing that happened in the house of God, the land. It's happening right now. All of Israel would stand up and say, we have God as our father, Abraham as our father, we stand in him, no harm will ever come to us. And what was the very next thing that happened? They were scattered, destroyed, tortured, you name it. Same exact thing is coming now. And many of them, especially this YouTube section that I've been zeroed in on, they believe that the rapture is coming to rescue them. When the rapture is their judgment, it is the tearing away from the body, which is causing it to stumble. And those who are teaching things that are completely anti-Christ, but at the same time saying they're going to be saved by Christ. They're not going in a rapture to be saved. The rapture is coming to tear them apart, limb from limb. So the prophecy that I can guarantee is going to happen is we are not going to stand. And I do believe that there is a rapture coming, and I do believe that the return of Jesus is coming, and we're going to see it. I don't know when, and I can't say that on specifics, but based simply upon what we can understand, if the rapture doesn't come, if Jesus doesn't come, let's just even put that aside for a second because we can't even agree on those things. If we're not in the end times even, we're still divided and we're still going to fall. That's just as simple as it goes. When you can't get a large enough group of people to agree on anything, you're going to fall. And you look at America as a country and, and the doctrines even in the world with the governments, nobody can agree on, on anything. Even little things, simple things become a gigantic argument to where nothing gets done and you're literally watching the West, America, collapse in real time because of that because it's a house divided. The very same thing is happening within the house of God. It is divided and it will fall. Whether we're in the end times or not, it will fall. And I'm sure there will be people that will disagree with that, saying, no, the restoration is coming. God's going to raise us back up because, again, you go back to what happened in ancient Israel before they fall. They said the same exact things. God is with us. We will last forever. And then the flood came and swept them all away. Different being floods that I'm speaking of, not a literal flood, but whether it be war, whether it had been a disaster, whether it had been anything, it happened. They fell. That same thing is going to come to us. And let me give you an example of this. Specifically, if you have multiple children, this will be really easy for you to understand. And if you don't have multiple children, maybe you yourself are a sibling. And maybe if you weren't a sibling, you, you're wise enough to understand what I'm saying here in relation to it. Think of this as like a parable, but one I'm going to explain exactly as I'm speaking it to you. Imagine a situation where, let's say you have three children and you have a parent. And you have two of those children just going back and forth with each other. You can't get a moment's rest without them arguing, griping, crying, pushing, kicking, throwing fits at each other, yelling and screaming. You just, you, you just look at them and say, stop it, stop it, repeatedly. Find something else to do repeatedly. And they don't. They just keep going at each other. Usually a brother and a sister are the best kind of pair for this. And they just won't stop no matter what. And let's say you have a third child that maybe isn't doing anything, but they're around those two, so they're becoming agitated. They might not be doing anything wrong, but when the parent reaches that point where they're so sick of having to deal with those two children that are arguing, that the third child gets swept up into it. And the parent finally says, you separate right now or you're going to get it. And you know that your parent is serious in that case. You're listening to them. You see the facial structure. You know they're not playing around anymore. If you don't stop doing what you're doing, they're going to come at you and you're going to get your punishment. So the children realize this seriousness and, and they, they separate. The parent, the parent demands that they separate because 
just for five minutes, they want peace again in that house. And they can't get it any other way. Just separate them until the peace comes back because I just need to be able to get a little bit of peace. And the third child, of course, gets swept up into this as well. And they also recognize the situation. Whether they were joining in or part of it or not, all three of the children go each their own ways and separate. And the parent gets that peace. And that's my feeling today as I wake up. And I look at the body, the house of God, divided as it is. I do it. You do it. Everybody you listen to does it. All the churches do it. Everybody speaks something against somebody else. There is no peace in that house amongst any of us. And I tell you that this morning, for the first time in nine years, I think about this, and I really, really, really think about it. And I think to myself, you know what? I better go over there in the corner and just sit down, whether I'm doing anything or not, or I'm going to get that belt too. And I'm relating back to the scriptures where Jesus speaks of, well, a couple different things, but, but the first thing is that one who goes into captivity is going to go into captivity. One who is going to live by the sword is going to die by the sword. Everything's already laid out. So we already are in a position where we're not changing people's minds, and I've spoken on this before. There's nothing hidden in the world. Jesus isn't hiding from anybody. The Spirit is poured out. If you want to get to know Him, He's right there for you, right in your lap. Nobody can claim ignorance on the day that He comes because He's everywhere. He's here. The Spirit is here poured out for us to interact with, to get to know. So anybody that's listening to false prophets and false teachers, they can't claim ignorance because they could have gotten to know Him just as I did, just as you have. But we're getting caught up in this also. And this is where you can then go to Matthew 25, for instance, and look at the virgins. The five wise, the five foolish. And I've used this parable over and over again because it can mean so many different things by application. The foolish ones are going to sit there and keep fighting whenever their parent is serious and telling them to separate. Stay away from each other. Just bring peace back, even for a moment. They just won't stop, even then. So then what happens? The parent goes and gets the belt and they get their whooping. What about the third child who wasn't doing nothing? They're going to get caught up in it one way or another, whether they too then try to step in and defend their siblings and they end up getting hit with the belt, or uh, whether they start crying and then you have more chaos in the house. No matter what, that third child is also getting swept up into that ordeal. Nobody in the house is going to have peace once that's going on. And I'm telling you that I feel that that understanding, it's time to just go sit down somewhere and shut up. Because God is serious about what is about to happen to us. There's no peace left in this world. Peace has been taken away from it, even within the house of God. And it will not stand through this because of that division. And it's where the Lord says, for instance, even in Matthew 24, that when you see those things playing out in your day, no one needs to tell you about what's going to come next because as Paul said, you're going to know it. You're going to be aware of what's coming. And I'm well aware of it. I've been well aware of it for a while, but this morning it's just, it's just right there. You know, it's, it's inescapable for anybody who's paying attention at all of what's going on. We're aware of the days. We're aware of what's coming next. Destruction, death, chaos. And it's coming to us, the body, the house. So what does Jesus tell us to do? Pray that you be counted worthy to escape all these things. And that's, that's my main understanding and my main takeaway all of, of all of this. The works that I'm producing, no one's going to listen to me that isn't already listening. We're not winning people anymore, for the Lord is here winning them himself. We're nothing but a vessel. He points and we go. And if you are willing to listen and love the truth, you will be pointed to the truth. You will be pointed towards those who have it. But those who love the lie, they're pointed towards the lie because that's what they've loved. We're not winning people anymore. The gospel's been spread to the whole world already. Everybody's already had that opportunity to lose their ignorance, and they're not. So what does the Lord say? 
What does the Lord want? What does that parent want during those times such as that where the siblings are just fighting? Just separate. Separate. You go over there, you go over there, you go over there. I don't care if you did anything or not. You're still going over there. And that's exactly what I'm saying that I feel today. Pray to be counted worthy to escape these things that are about to come. Because we're not stopping them. And they're not going to work themselves out. There's not going to be some miraculous miracle that saves the house of God. Where Nineveh was spared, we are not going to be spared. Because there's nobody amongst the whole house that's actually sitting with their sackcloth and ashes on. That's actually sitting down in that corner and just shutting up because you know it's serious. There's nobody mourning for the house of God in the state that it's in. And not because we feel offended by somebody that's come against us, but because of the name of God itself is offended. There's nobody looking after God and what his thoughts and his feelings are whenever he would be looking over this world. And no, we are not God. We cannot put ourselves in his shoes. His thoughts are not our thoughts, but his will we can know. And who is mourning over this? No, we're spending our time still bickering, still going back and forth with each other. No, this is right, that's right, that's wrong, this is wrong. We can't agree on this, we can't agree on that. Nobody is just putting on their sackcloth, sitting down in that corner, shutting up, beating their chest and saying, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. I'm not doing nothing right now. I'm going to sit over here until you come. I'm going to wait for you to come. I'm going to wait for whatever judgment is coming. To pass over. And I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to sit here and shut up until it does. That is the will of God that I am perceiving today. That we are to just sit in that corner. Beating our chests. Crying out to God for the sake of his name in this world. And what has been done to it. And begging and pleading for the mercy because we know that the next thing that's coming is destruction and judgment to this whole house because it's divided and will not stand. Hebrews 13.8 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. For I the Lord do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. And I say Malachi 3.6. This is a big one. God isn't going to change either with saving a remnant. The remnant that gets it. The one where the light bulb goes off and they understand the seriousness of the situation and they do the will of God which is to mourn and weep over this. Over the state of the house of Israel in the world. To weep and mourn over all of us who have been divided and at each other. When it's time to sit down and shut up and listen and wait patiently until that wrath passes over us. Because guess what? As a parent I have three kids. I have an older son, I have a middle daughter, and a youngest daughter. And the one where I give you the example of is of my oldest, or my only oldest son, and my middle daughter, for they fight nonstop over everything. And you know what? Things get out of hand, and the younger daughter gets swept in it sometimes, too. And no, it's nothing crazy or chaotic or nothing that's any different than any other household. We all understand the picture. We all deal with it as parents and as children and everything else. And I tell you that after a few moments even of peace, I'm ready to go back, ask them what they want to eat. You guys want to do something? Anything. Because the wrath quickly passes over and the anger subsides. Because the parent loves the children, the children love the parent. God loves us and we love God. The anger will quickly subside the judgment will pass over for that remnant who knows the will of God to perform it in season. And my friends, this is that season to sit in that corner and just shut up because God's serious and destruction and judgment is coming to the body of Christ, to the house of God. And all we got to do is just wait for that wrath to pass over. Wait for him to come and grab us and pull us out. Take us away from that wrath. Give him the peace for a moment. Let that wrath pass over while all the others, the foolish virgins, keep bickering back and forth about their pride, about who's right and who's wrong, who's this and who's that. Let the foolish ones be foolish. 
Let no one who is wise join in with those who are fools. This is serious, my friends, and we all know it. Anyone with any eyes to see it all understands and knows this. A house divided will not stand, and we are divided in every single way. And I can guarantee this prophecy will come to pass. This house will not stand through it. But a remnant, O children, O Jacob, will not be consumed. God bless.